Hi there. I've been learning a lot about inks this year. I have collected fountain pens for a while, but I didn't really start taking ink seriously until pretty recently. Um, I used to feel like a black and maybe a few colors was enough to go with. Um, but I learned that there are more differences in inks than just the color of the inks. There are other factors to consider when you're getting a fountain pen ink. One of the factors is how easily the ink cleans out of your pen. When you want a, an ink that's simple to clean out of your pen, you can try a well-behaved ink. Here's some suggestions for well-behaved inks. This is... Diamine and Waterman inks. I consider these to be really well-behaved inks. Um, the Diamine inks are quite easy to clean up. They're fairly water-soluble. Um, the Waterman ink as well is quite easy to clean up. So the type of pen I would use these inks in would be my vintage pens. And the reason that I like to do that is because vintage pens can be a little bit finicky about their ink and you can never truly get a vintage pen all that clean. So, because you can't separate the nib from the section without some difficulty. So in all of these vintage pens, I would probably only use the well-behaved ink. This is a, a Ready Point Flex Pen. This is another Flex Pen with a 14 karat gold nib. Um, I believe it might be an Eclipse or a Morrison. Uh, and this is a Welsh Perma Point. And all of these are from the 40s and the 20s respectively. So they are nearly 100 years old. Some of them might even be 100 years old and they need to be treated more carefully. So we use these inks. Now the next category of inks you can use in pens, which is also, this category is probably okay to use in vintage pens as well. These are high lubricity inks. And when I say high lubricity inks, what that means is that the inks have like a, a soap type, detergent type product in them that makes them flow well. So these are Hiroshizuku inks. I can never say that word. And um, yes, you could use these in any vintage pen, but there's a consideration with the Hiroshizuku inks. I would probably not use them in the flex nibs. And the reason I would not use them in the flex nibs is because they are, uh, they bleed through and they, they flow too much, essentially. You want that to that flow to be slightly restricted, but the Welsh Perma Point, I would have no problem with using these. So that's another one. And then the third category of ink, oh, whoops, and another thing about these is that they are very good with italic pens, like calligraphy pens. And uh, this Pilot Prera here is a perfect example of a pen which is married to a kind of ink, which is interesting to me because the Hiroshizuku inks are Japanese inks and they are made by the Pilot Company and this is a Pilot pen also made by the Pilot Company and it was scratchy and annoying and it caught on things until I used the Hiroshizuku inks in them in the pen and then it worked like a completely different pen and I have a feeling that when I try this Schaefer calligraphy pen I'm probably going to have the same result. Okay, so the next category of inks is the saturated inks. And these inks have a lot of dye in them, but they are not, um, they're not impossible to clean out of your pens. They are difficult to clean out of your pens, but it is possible to do it. So I would probably choose not to use these in my pens that are hard to clean out. Um, an example of that might be the vintage pens, although I would be probably be able to use it. I don't think I would use it in the flex pens or the Permapoint. 
Um, you could use these in like a modern calligraphy pen because you can soak all the nibs and parts in these calligraphy pens, but you can't, I don't, I think I would stay away from these types of inks in a vintage pen. You will know these inks by the way they are very, very hard to clean off your hands. So for example, this Noodler's Turquoise, and I'm not picking on it because it's a lovely ink, but if you happen to get that on your hands, it can take quite a bit of effort to clean it off. And the inside of your pen will react to that in the same way that your hands do. It's going to be very difficult to get it out and it will probably alter the colors of any other inks that you put in to the pen. So you, need, you really need with these inks a pen where you can separate the nib and section and clean that. So these two pens would be okay. These three pens would not. Um, my last pen here is a Twisby Diamond 580, and I would probably stay away from this category of inks with the Twisby. I would say that the well-behaved inks and the high lubricity inks would be okay. So, to further confuse you, I have another category of inks. And these are... I'm going to, for lack of a better way of describing them, I'm going to call them semi-permanent, because... They are not permanent, but let's just say these are in the category of permanent inks because I have a couple that are also permanent that are from this sample selection here. Um, and there's another one. Oh yeah. Okay. So these two, um, this is Noodler's Heart of Darkness. It's quite used. The bottle is, is kind of, this is not impossible to clean out of anything. It's not. It does not stop up your pens or anything like that. Uh, same goes for the Noodler's Polar Brown. This ink has kind of like the unique characteristic of being also, uh, I guess it doesn't freeze. So there must be something in it to prevent it from freezing, like possibly alcohol or something. I'm not sure what that would be. Uh, how, or, gosh, I would have no idea. I'm, I'm wondering. It's probably a trade secret of Nathan Tardis. So with these two inks, I would be able to use, um, even, I would say even this pretty gushy flex pen, I would be comfortable with using with those. And I would use the Twisby with those. And I would use the Pilot Prayer with those. But I probably, the Pilot Prayer would do better with the high lubricity inks. It just does so well with these. I never want to use it with anything else, but that's just because it's so, yeah, you can use some pens with this, um, fine nibs, medium nibs, and probably the more gushy, um, flex nibs. And then we come to the totally permanent inks, and that's this Diatromenis document black. This is like a Sharpie in a bottle essentially. Um, it has uh, particulates in it. Um, it's it's a, what's called a pigmented ink and we need to be very careful about using those in most pens that we can't clean out. So there again, if you cannot, my little pet rule for these is if you cannot separate the nib from the section, which I believe is only in those two that you can, um, I would not attempt to use those inks with any pen where you can't, because you will have to seriously clean that pen out when you're done using these inks. I had an incident with the Mont Blanc Permanent Blue uh, where it just made this pen clog within like 24 hours. I mean, this stuff, you basically have to use it and then clean it out of the pen right away. You cannot put the pen cap on and forget about it in any way whatsoever. That's just not an option with these two inks. And with these also, they tend to dry out more quickly than these other inks over here. Um, so we have one final category of inks to address, and that is specialty inks. And these two inks are shimmering inks. And the way shimmering inks work is they are a dye pigment. So they don't have, um, they are dye based ink instead of a pigment based ink. So they shouldn't have too many particulates in them, except for the shiny metal stuff on the bottom of the bottle. See that? When you shake that up, 
it goes into solution and it adds shimmer to the ink. So this is Diamine Purple Pizzazz and this is Gerba, um 1670 Anniversary Rouge Hematite. Um, I love these both. I love these inks a lot. But you have to be very careful with these inks that you can wash them out of your pen. Now, the Gerba I've used in my Twisby, and all this Twisby is a fine nib, and it didn't clog with the use of the Gerba. Um, I would probably not be afraid to use the Rouge Hematite in this one, um, and I wouldn't be afraid to use it in either of these. Now, the Diamine Purple Pizzazz here is what this is actually full of right now. And it is not working very well because it's it's getting stopped up by the little particulates, those little gold particulates that you can see on the bottom are stopping up the ink and, and preventing that from going where it's supposed to go. Now, the final ink that I have here is an ink that I have not used yet. This one is called Noodlers. Um, what's the name of this ink? Ah, the Blue Ghost is the name of this ink. And this is Invisible Ink. You cannot use Invisible Ink in a pen that has had any color of ink in it before. So none of these pens would be acceptable to use with the Invisible Ink. Why? Because there's going to be traces of pigment left in all of these pens from previous uses. So you need to use invisible ink with a pen which is dedicated only to the use of invisible ink. And Noodlers nicely sent me a pen, which is a Noodlers Charlie pen um, to go with my invisible ink. So yeah, you have to use a pen that you have not used before. That's how this works. Other than that, I think the ink is, is pen friendly and okay to use in pretty much any modern day pen. I don't know that I would use it in vintage pens just because I really don't know much about the chemical composition of this ink, and until I've done it, I don't want to tell you to do it. A further option for any ink you happen to feel using, uncomfortable using in your fountain pen would be a water brush. And the water brushes, you can actually unscrew. They See, this is bristle, and you can unscrew this, whoops, other way. Um, and fill this with water, but you can also fill this with ink. So you can choose to fill it with either water or ink, and these purple pizzazz, the sparkling inks, and the permanent inks, you can totally use in a water brush and have no fear of being able to reconstitute your brush because the feed system in the water brush has a lot of like gaps and holes in it, and it basically stays wet. And as long as you clean it out reasonably well by squeezing water through it, you should never have a problem with any of these inks. And plus, water brushes are like between three and ten bucks. So if you do mess one up, it's probably not the end of the world. However, if you feel uncomfortable with an ink, I would say go with a water brush just to be on the safe side. Um... Well, I guess that's about all I have to say about inks for now. I hope this was useful, and if you have any questions, I would be happy to address them in the comments. Have a nice day.